But what I've done now, I've just noticed that there's beer outside there, and so if you've had a bit too much beer and you're sort of tending to nod off, I thought I would start out with the conclusion. So this is my overview of, uh, of all the of all the other tools, and I'm giving them these little uh, arrows up and down, and uh, and you don't have to write them all down. They're all on I keep a website. Or a toolwatch, oratoolwatch.com, where you can find my uh, my opinion. So as long as you know that, then it's okay if you if you not off. And I'll come back to the slide. Right. So um, my name is Dean Destiny. Um, my goal is to make the world a better place by helping people use appropriate information technology to achieve their goals. Which is why this is my favorite presentation because I can tell people this tool is good for this. this tool is that, and hopefully you will go out and choose the right tool, or you'll have more information to choose the tool that, that you want to use. Uh, I'm an Oracle Ace Director, which is kind of uh, an honorary title that Oracle gives out. There's about 100 of us um, across all the Oracle products in the world. And we could go to briefings. I'm off to, uh, to San Francisco uh, next week because there's open world over there. We get these briefings about where is Oracle, where they're moving. And in return for this information, we can go out and share our knowledge, share in presentations like this. I'm also a partner in a consulting company called Scott Tiger. So uh, this is actually not us. It's kind of hard to see the faces here. But this is this is actually Oracle Corporation. This is Oracle's one year birthday. And here's the cake with one candle on it. And the guy holding it. The guy holding the cake is actually the guy that our company is indirectly named after. If you're an Oracle developer, you know that you have, would have logged on with the Scott Tucker account. So this is actually the Scott. This is Bruce Scott, Oracle employee number four, who was the first person to write the memorable words, create user Scott identified by Tiger. So he created that in version two of the Oracle database, and it's been there ever since. And I don't know if you can tell from this picture. Anybody can recognize who this gentleman out here is? It's Larry Ellison, yes. And Larry Ellison, of course, salesman as he was, he knew if he was coming out with this brand new relational database product, version 1.0, who would buy such a thing? So the first Oracle version was, of course, the version 2. And the rest is history. So, Scott Tiger, uh, and this is the most important slide of the whole presentation. It's not important to me, it doesn't really necessarily matter to you, because when I show this slide, coming here makes it marketing, which means that I'm working now. And if I didn't show you this slide, I would be on vacation. So, we're a consulting company, and you can buy our services, and we help you develop, develop systems, we test them, we do product management, all sorts of wonderful things, and come out and get a business card. Uh, one tool that was dear to my heart, uh, it's getting hard to see, that was Oracle Designer. I used to work with Oracle Designer a lot. I worked with Oracle Designer. That's a few people, well, okay. I'm keeping Oracle Designer on the, on the list of tools just for all time's sake, but in practice, in practice, it's dead. So, uh, for this overview, think of a specific application. It makes it easier for you to work out um, what's good and what's not if you're thinking of an application that you are building or you will be building. So if you keep a specific application in mind, then when I say something is good, you can, you can sort of connect it in your brain to the application that you're thinking of. So I encourage you to sort of think of an application that you have running or you might be building in your organization as I go through these tools because it will make it easier for you to, to uh, position your, to, to uh, get the information to, uh, to stick in your brain. There are two um, main kinds of applications that you to, to think about where you, where you fit in. Are you building something with a rich user interface for professional users? Or are you using something for casual users? Casual users in the simple user interface. If you're building something, a time reporting application where somebody will report their work time once every uh, week or they report their expenses once every month, you should not build a complicated uh, you should not build a complicated user interface. You don't need a complicated user interface, so you can use a simple tool. If you're building something like an accounting system, something for people who be working heads down, you're just sitting there working with that application all day, you will need a more complicated, more capable tool that can build you more complicated user interfaces. 
And then you do need to work, you do need to think about whether your whether your users are always are always connected. Sometimes uh, there is this tendency that we'll just be building web applications because everybody's on the internet all the time. I hear over here in Latvia you have fiber optics everywhere. That's of course wonderful. Um, we don't have that in Denmark, not yet anyway. Um, and some people, some mobile users will be using the applications out where there's no mobile coverage. So just think of that, keep that in mind because you can't just use a web application if you want it to run disconnected. If you want to have an intermittently connected application, somebody can take out and feel that is, uh, that is something that you need to uh, think about. So, this is your development team paddling down the Oracle development river. And so, if you're an Oracle shop, you've, been, you've had one choice. You've had Oracle forms for many years, and you know the tool well, and you know, you just nicely paddling down the river. And as time goes by, you notice that the water is getting rougher and the waves are getting bigger. And you hear it, you hear this roar from around the corner, and you turn the corner, and there's this great big rock in the middle of the river, and your boat is being pushed up against this rock. So that's your development scene. Okay, you've been paddling down the Oracle Development River nice and easy, but now you're at a position point. So what you can do is you can do nothing. If you're an Oracle form shop and you do nothing, you go to the next version of go with Forms 11, Forms 12, Forms 13, Forms 14, etc. And you won't really be moving forward, but then again you won't be drowning either. So if you do nothing, you'll stay pushed up against the rock, and that's fine, that's an option for some people to stay with their existing development tool, which for an Oracle shop would typically be more form. You also have the choice. If you look to the, if you look to, uh, to this this bank of the river, there is uh, there's valuable glasses and a nice fleet of minivans standing there. And he said, and that's uh, that's Bill Gates. He says, come over here, jump out of the Oregon Development River. Come over here. We have this fleet of nice, all nice minibuses that are all the same, and they take you nice and comfortably down this road away from the Oregon Development River. That's the .NET route, and that's valid for some people. You can decide to leave the Oracle Development River and go with the Microsoft part stack. Look to the other side. On the other bank, there is a collection of people, definitely not wearing shirts, but wearing t-shirts and uh, sandals and suspenders, and, uh, and that's the open source crowd. And behind them, there is this big jungle with lots of paths. And they'll say, come over here. Now this is the open source we have. You can go this way or that way or this way or the other way. And if you don't like any of them, you can just hack your own way. And that's a valid option as well. So some people choose to do that and choose to leave the Oracle development river and say, we'll take one of these open source frameworks. So that was three options. If you do nothing, you stay in the middle of the river with work forms. Or you could go leave the river, drive away, nice paved road down the Microsoft route, or you can go Explore the open source jungle. Or there are also two branches of the river. You can stay in the Oracle development river. If you look down one side, way down the river is the Oracle Racing Yachts. And they are just full speed ahead. They're way down the river there. And they're not looking back. They are just sailing their way very fast. And that is the develop that's Oracle Application Development Framework. That's Oracle Fusion Middleware. That's the way Oracle is building their next generation ERP system, Fusion Applications. That's the Oracle ADF group. If you don't want the big uh, Oracle BMW racing yachts, look the other side of the river, of the rock. If you go down this side of the rock, there is um, there is um, a collection of, uh, of small canoes. Lots of friendly people there saying, come this way, this way. You know, it's much easier, it's not as big, it's not as hard, it's not as complicated. It's much easier and will help you. And that's the Application Express way. So if you take the Application Express tool, that's also you stay in the Oracle Development River. It's the smaller branch of the Oracle Development River, but it's completely appropriate for, for, some, for some users. So those are our options in the Oracle in the Oracle world if you're an Oracle form shop today. You can stay with Oracle Forms, you can go with the .NET route, 
go with the open source route, and if you stay with, within the one stay within the Oracle tools, there are two tools today. There's the ADF, Application Development Framework, that you can build in several ways, and there is Application Express. So those are the five options that you have to have to use here. <laughs> First, the form tool. Um, what Oracle is saying, they're giving out this, this statement of direction thing, and they're saying we're not, forms is not going away. They're saying um, we will deliver, deliver Oracle Forms to LC. So, uh, so they're saying you are safe with your forms because they let you walk around. But when you have um, there is Oracle. Yes, there used to be. It used to be that the statement of directions and how we to use some of the, the key, thing, key things here. You don't have to do here. But uh, you just Google the Oracle, the Oracle uh, statement of direct, direction that has one, that one, that table as well. It used to be that the Oracle statement of direction was just a technique writing something about what they were going to do. But you know, the lawyers have found it, so now it's full of legally saying, uh, and we're not promising anything anyway. But uh, what they are sort of almost promising is. They're saying Forms and Reports 11GR2, the latest version that we have today, it's supported, it has previous support until October 2016, that's still a few years, and extended support until October 2017. There's nothing magical about, or about 2017, it's not like Larry said, okay, we'll give them until October 2017, but then they'll have to. It means that Oracle products are generally supported for eight years after launch. Which means that if we get Forms 12C this year, we'll get five years of premium support and three years of extended support. So if we get Forms 12C this year, 2013, that will take us to 2021 with a supported version. I know many people are running unsupported version of Oracle Forms. You know, Oracle said you should, you really should move on from 6i or Forms 4.5 or whatever you've done. People are still running that. Well, that's that's your that's your choice. But the Oracle Forms is not going away, and Oracle is committed to, to continuing to uh, continue. So, if you want to go with the uh, with the .NET route, of course you have great uh, great uh, tools for it. Microsoft has always been building good tools. Um, it's, it's to me, it's a lot of code. It's, it generates a lot of code. <laughs> Personally, that's that's not an approach that appeals to me, but. It doesn't really matter. You can build useful, um, useful products there. If you need to build a client server application, something that's intermittently connected, something that you know, a sales rep has on his laptop when he will register orders and only when he gets back into mobile coverage will he upload data, then your best tool today is probably um, a .NET tool because they have the good client server support that you do have in forms, but that's gone away. Uh, so that's, that's definitely a choice. The open source uh, frameworks. Um, well, personally, I, mean, I, I, I suffered a bit. You know, the framework of the month syndrome. Like, um, problem with with open source to me is, you know, I'm kind of lazy. And you know, there's a new framework every month that's cooler and greater than the last one, and I have to learn a new framework. And, you know, I learned Oracle Forms when I started in IT. And Oracle Forms has been around for 25 years and, you know, still going strong. And now I've learned Oracle ADF. I've learned, I know a bit of Apex as well, but I've learned Oracle ADF because that's where I'm doing most of my day job. So that will take, that will, being this Oracle, that will last for another 25 years. So that will take you to retirement. So uh, why would I need to learn more frameworks? Like, I, I, I plan to go through my entire IT career with two tools. I hope that's, uh, maybe that's a not be a record. Okay, so in the ADF world, the ADF faces is Oracle's version, is Oracle's uh, extension to JSF. So, um, ADF faces, Java, so that's Oracle's version of Java server faces. So they're coming up with their own components, but basically, technologically, it's Java server faces. So it's a component technology, that you are you're not doing like you could in JHP, that you just mix code and, and, and presentation together. You have these components, and they are they are mapped to some kind of of, uh, of underlying data source. That's what Oracle is using for fusion applications. It's a huge, big enterprise ERP system. Uh, so they have built a system of 
like 6,000 screens, uh, or 6,000 task forces, I don't remember. A huge big application that does everything from logistics to financials to uh, HR to CRM, everything. So the tool is good and they can build really big systems with it because Oracle has, has built their really big ERP There's also something called ADS Swing, which is an excellent swing component. If you're familiar with building Java, Java UIs, you'll know the swing, the swing components. The ADS Swing components are Oracle's version of the normal swing components, but they've been extended with these data binding features, so they're really easy to bind to an underlying data source. So that's what uh, that's what uh, what is the option, the ADF option for. Um, for if you want to build a client server application. Unfortunately, not many people are using AEF Swing, so it's not, it doesn't, it's not really well supported by Oracle. It's not, there's not that much, uh, there's not that many tutorials on it, so, uh, so that's why it's technically possible to have a Swing front end and build a client server application based on AEF. In practice, it's, uh, it's really Okay, there was, back in 2004, there was something called HTMLDB, which was this little, this little tool for building, like, if you just wanted to build, have a little website that updated the table. And it was a toy, right? But, or there was actually a little team working on this, and they kept at it, and, you know, it's still here, and, uh, and it's, if it's a toy, it's, it's gotten a pretty sophisticated toy by now. You can actually build a lot of great applications with Application Express. Application Express is another Oracle development tool. It is not strategic to Oracle in that you know they are building their own big applications. On the other hand, Oracle have inside their organization more than 2,000 Application Express applications running, so they are using it themselves. There are several applications, several customer-facing applications that are built with Application Express as well. The strength of Application Express is that it's all browser-based. Install Application Express, and you go through a series of like, browser pages where you select, I would like something that maintains data in this table. You can select the table, you select which columns you might change the prompts, and press a button and your application is ready. So it's very fast to develop with. There's not that, uh, there's not that, uh, that much of a packaging and deploying thing because you're working directly on the server. It has this, um, it has this uh, great feature that it's free, which is, well actually it's not, I used to say it's free, but Oracle told me that it's not free. It's a no cost option to the database, which is apparently something different from free. I'm not really sure I get it. But, <laughs> but uh, maybe it's just something that Larry doesn't like the word free. <laughs> but you have a, if you want to run AEF, um, it used to be that you needed a WebLogic server license. That's not the case anymore. So ADF is actually also free because there's a version of ADF, ADF Essentials, that will run on a glass server. So you can run ADF Essentials, you can run ADF for free on an open source stack. It used to be that you needed a WebLogic server, but that's not the case anymore. You can run ADF on, um, on open source. You can even get support from Oracle for running it on, the, on open source if you want to. And it's not, not that bad, I think it's like $1,500 per year per server. Oracle is always licensing things per CPU. This is per server. I'll get a monster 64 uh, CPU quad core thing, and I'll only pay $1,500 a year to support it. So that's, that's a great deal. So I have a free option both in the ADF world and in the, uh, in the APEX world. So APEX will run, I can run it off the free database, off the Oracle. Of the uh, Oracle Express database, or it's free if you have one. This is a slide that I stole from Oracle um, because I love the way that you know it has this. There's the business users, and there's the enterprise developer, and there's the Apex developer. The brand developer here, that's the Apex guys, and they can be you can see they can be recognized by their distinctive hairstyle. What is uh, what's interesting about this is that you know they're trying to use to to uh, Place application express as a rapid application development tool, but it just show, goes to show that you can't really ask Oracle about the development tools because if you ask the application, the application express guys, they'll say that you know 
Uh, you can't use the forms for an enterprise application? I don't think so. Or you can't create a rapid application with Java? I don't think so. So they tend to, uh, I'm using this to mock, to mock Oracle, of course, a little bit, because if you ask Oracle, you'll always hit some project manager, and you'll be project manager for Apex, so Apex is great for everything. Well, you'll need a project manager for ADF, and ADF is great for everything. But there is a difference. So we have forms, .NET, open source, ADF, and Oracle options, the modern Oracle options, are ADF and Express. I got this slide from a, company, a German company called Hits, who created this forms, uh, this forms uh, operate tool, and it's so it's a bit old by now, but it had this about what are forms people, what are forms people planning to do, and these were people who had older versions of forms, and what are what are you going to do about them, and it sort of the interesting thing is it sort of splits uh, evenly. Some people want to stay with forms, so these are the people who want to stay with forms. These are the people who want to go with ADF. These are the people who want to go with, uh, with Application Express. These are other kinds of tools they want to go with Microsoft or open source. And this whole thing, this whole bunch over here, they're the people who haven't decided yet. So that's like the third one. So all of these options that I'm describing, all these five options are valid. Some people are, some people are choosing them. Just briefly on printing options, there's something called BI Publisher. That's a great tool if you can afford it, but it's an enterprise level thing. You know what happens to the price in, in an Oracle product if it's an enterprise product, right? So, um, but it's great because it does, what it does is it separates the data from the presentation. And you, I've been doing more work and reports a lot, and you know the business user will come to me and ask to, for a layout change to a report. And I would have to open Report Builder and change things around and commit and save and deploy it. But in BI Publisher, I can just define the data, and the business user can define his own report in Microsoft Word. That's great. It's an offloading of tasks. So BI Publisher is a great tool. It comes with, if you have a workplace Oracle uh, e-business suite or diffusion application, you get it. If not, then, uh, well, you might want to stay with Oracle reports because it's still there. Uh, or you can in investigate something else. But Oracle doesn't really have something that replaces Oracle reports. They have BI Publisher. For enterprise, if you, don't, if you don't want that, well, off you go. So, what should you use? Go not to the elves for advice, and they will say both yes and no. And if you ask me, of course, what should I use, I would say, well, I can't really tell you because I don't really know your situation. But I will dare a few uh, pieces of advice. If you are building a complex application, and if you want forms, you should stay with forms. This whole idea of I want to redevelop the whole thing in the, in the latest, greatest technology. If you ask, you say that to the business, and you say if you have a six-month project, <coughs> oh, and what will we get out of it? The business says, oh, it'll work just like before. That's not a, that's not a good business case. So if you have Oracle forms, just stay with them. Otherwise, you go with ADF faces because that's really good for complex applications. You might consider ADF swing, but that's a bit of an issue unless you really need the uh, really need the capability to run, but it's a little bit connected. Medium complexity, that's where Apex comes in. So you can do build medium complexity application, you can build use application express, or you can use ADF faces, or you can use forms. So all of the three of the Oracle options are uh, valid there. And of course, now I'm just talking about the Oracle options you can always choose the source of Microsoft. For simple applications, there is no doubt about that Application Express is a great tool for a tactical application, something that you just need that you need to get. You're not planning to run it for 20 years. You just need you just need something that you want to run right now. Application Express is like forms in that it builds an application that looks like your tables. If you have an invoice table, you'll have an invoice screen. It's just based on the concept of a, a screen maintaining data that's in one table. If you want something where you will be working, where you will be designing a screen depending on what the user does, and then and then you want to so you design the screen from the user's workflow, and then you want to make it, uh, a system that, that implements that. ADF has a split between the data layer and the user interface layer, so you can do that. 
Forms can't do that, and Application Express can't do that. Application Express and Forms are table-based. You have a table structure, and when you have a table structure, your user interface tends to match the table structure. Right, reporting. If you have BI publisher, if you can afford it, if you already have it, that's great. Otherwise, yeah, you can stay with reports if you have that, or you can check out various other tools. Finally, you know, the database is always here. So there's always the question, where should I put my business logic? And uh, well, the database is a good place to put your business logic, because you'll be changing your database very, 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 very. But this is a, there are, there's a new interface to build. There's ADF, there's Application Express, it might be forms. A lot of that you've implemented in the database is going to be in the database, and you'll be running the same database in 25 years, but you won't be running the same time. So, back to the overview. So I'm saying that ADF Faces is doing great. ADF Swing is definitely not doing great. Application Express is also fairly good. At BI Publisher, well, it's, because it's a great tool, but nobody can afford it. The designer is dead. Uh, forms, I'm, I'm sort of uh, moving this arrow back and forth a little bit on order performance, but what I'm seeing right now is forms are stable. There are people, there are, there is, uh, it's still here, and people are not migrating away from forms big time, or if a report is sort, of, uh, is sort of going down. I have this one, that, that's always, uh, I'm not going to uh, take questions on this one, that's always an argument, you can take, the, take it outside uh, later. But I, I have PL SQL on the, on the, on the down arrow, um, and um, that's because, that's because um, I rarely see a gun in PL SQL. Think about that. When you, now, there are some young people here in the room and they're interested in working with tools. How many here are PLC programmers? Uh, okay, um, now if you look around there. So, um, so uh, that's sort of my point on PLC. Uh, I have a couple of Oracle, I have a couple of, of Oracle portal products here. There used to be something called Oracle Portal, that's there. That's where Oracle Web Center. Again, it's a great product. Right, so um, that was all I had to say. I keep my opinion on oracleoverwatch.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, I have a blog, and uh, you can email me. And feel free to send me a message saying, you know, you don't, want, you don't know what you're talking about, and this tool is great, or that tool is lousy. And uh, I love that. So uh, I think, I'm afraid that we've used all our time here. Yes, but you can.